dear Bess, remember Maya Wynn from high school? I'm visiting her in St. Louis. We have tickets to tonight's premiere of the new Brady Armstrong movie, Vanishing Destiny. It's the last screening ever at the Royal Palladium. This place has been a landmark for almost a century. And now, in just three days, it's going to be demolished. I wish I could have seen the theater back in the 20s before it was turned into a movie house. All the great magicians performed here, even Harry Houdini. There's a lot of public opposition to the loss of this historic building. Rumor has it local activists are planning to stage a big protest out front tonight. The theater will be closed when we arrive, but they'll let us in since Maya is covering the story for the university newspaper. Oh boy, a press pass sure does come in handy. Maya told me she has an interesting lead, and we're on our way to interview Brady Armstrong about the controversy now. I know he's one of your favorite stars. Stay tuned. Maya always gets the full scoop. Talk to you soon. Love, Nancy. Okay, Nancy, here I go. Cross your fingers, there's a story behind this door. Go get them, Scoop. Meet you in the lobby. Testing. <laughs> testing. One, two, three, testing. Is this thing on? Hello? <laughs> Think I'll go check out the snacks. That sounds like Maya. Help! Nancy! Hello? Listen carefully. If they knock the theater down, a girl goes with it. What? Who is this? Hello? Hello? You'll never get away with this, do you hear me? Uh, hello? You're messing with the wrong girls, whoever you are. She's a reporter and I'm a detective, and we don't scare easy. Um, this is Joseph Hughes, the caretaker. I'm looking for Brady Armstrong. He said he'd be there. Who's this? And what's all the excitement? My friend has disappeared from Brady's dressing room. I heard her scream. I think she's been kidnapped. Now, now, please try to calm down and tell me what's going on. What's your name, dear? My name is Nancy Drew. Maya Wynn is my friend, and she's gone. I was out in the hall when I heard her scream. I don't know how they could have taken her. Disappeared from the men's dressing room? What makes you think she was taken? I just received a threatening call saying if I don't stop the theater demolition, I'll never see her again. Whoa. They must have taken her through that secret passageway. Holy smokes. And you're on an inside line. That call must have come from inside the building. We gotta act quick. You check out the secret passageway. I'll make sure all the exits are locked and then I'll come find you. Hey, you. No groupies in the dressing rooms. But since you're such a rascally fan, what would you say to a signed autograph from yours truly? I'm not here for an autograph. My friend's been kidnapped. Kidnapped? Maybe you better tell me what's going on here. I heard Maya scream. When I got here, she was gone, vanished. And then I got a creepy phone call from the kidnapper. But where could they have taken her? What did they say? It's something to do with the demolition of the theater. The voice said, if they knock the theater down, the girl goes with it. Those stinking radicals. Please, I don't have time for small talk. Sure thing. How can I help? She may still be in the building. We've got to search this place from top to bottom. Roger. It's locked. I may have to cut this short, Hal. Someone just climbed out of my wardrobe. Can't you see I'm on the phone here? This is an emergency. I'm looking for a 19-year-old girl with black hair. Listen, sweetheart, I have a premiere tonight and no stylist for my star. So don't tell me about problems. But this is an emergency. I said scram.
St. Louis Police Department. I'm calling to report a kidnapping. Is the kidnapping in progress? No. Hold on, miss. I'll transfer you to the missing persons unit. Missing persons, Sergeant Mac Ramsey speaking. I'm calling to report a kidnapping. No longer in progress. And who am I speaking with, please? My name is Nancy Drew. Okay, Miss Drew. Now, did you witness this kidnapping? No, but I heard it. What exactly did you hear? My friend went into a dressing room. I was out in the hall. And I heard her scream, so I went in after her, but she was gone. When and where did this happen? Just now, at the Royal Palladium Theater. And what's your friend's name, Miss Drew? Maya Wynn. Can you spell that, please? M-A-Y-A, -A, last name N-G-U-Y-E-N. -E Age? 19. Physical description? She's Asian American, I guess about 5'5", five, five, long black hair. So you didn't actually witness anything, is that right? I heard her screaming, and I received a threatening phone call. That must count for something. A threat. Can you describe the voice? Was it a man or a woman? It was spooky. I think they were using some voice disguise device. Hmm, yes. That'll make it impossible to tell the gender of the caller. Did you notice anything suspicious looking in the vicinity? No. No suspects. Any visible signs of struggle in the dressing room? Did your friend leave anything behind? Her purse? Anything that might have fallen out of her pockets? No. No evidence? Does your friend work at the theater? No, she's a student at Washington University. Does your friend have any enemies? Maya? I highly doubt it. And what business did Maya have entering the theater dressing room? She's a reporter for the school paper. She was there to do an interview. What about Maya's parents? Have they been contacted? They're in Vietnam this time of year. I don't know how to contact them. Okay, miss. I'll file this report. After 24 hours, if she hasn't turned up, we consider her a missing person and begin to investigate. How can she turn up? She's been kidnapped. Unlikely. With all the scuttlebutt around this demolition, this stinks of student prank. A prank? But this building is going to be demolished in 72 hours. How can we afford to take that chance? How do you mean? The kidnapper must be holding her in the building, don't you think? Unlikely. No competent kidnapper keeps her captive anywhere near the scene of the abduction. Is there anything else, Miss Drew? Sergeant, I really don't think we can afford to wait 24 hours. It's standard procedure, Miss Drew. Unless you can provide us with some evidence that your friend was taken by force, it's 24 hours. Thanks, Sergeant. I'll call you back when I have the evidence. You do that. Bye. No teeny boppers till showtime. House rules. Have you seen my friend Maya? She's 19, 5'5", five five, black hair. She has on running shoes, jeans, and a black shirt with butterflies on it. And the crisis is? She's a reporter doing a story on the theater demolition. She was trying to interview Brady Armstrong. Forget Charmstrong. If she wants the real story, she better talk to me. And why is that? Hollywood? The fantastic plastic vacuum? I wouldn't go there in a pig's suitcase. I'm Nicholas Falcone, solemnly sworn to lead the forces of Haddit and slay the dragon of corporate generica. Who are you? And what's with the doom and gloom? I'm Nancy Drew. I was just on the phone with the police. What are you calling them for? A little taste of your tax dollars going bad? You have problems with the police? It's more like they have a problem with me. Does this have something to do with had it? Haven't you heard? The battle is on. There's a human chain forming out front as we speak. But all that can wait. It's obvious you got a situation. So what's up? My friend's been kidnapped. I've got to start searching this place. Whew. Kidnapping? <laughs> That's a high-profile tactic. Somebody means business. So what's the demands? The phone call was awful. They want the demolition stopped. No kidding. <laughs> That'll blast those bureaucrats and corporate bigwigs out of their dream world. Applause for the cause. We need all the help we can get. Excuse me? We're talking about a girl's life here. I'm sorry. I know you're upset, but they won't mess with your friend. They just took her for effect. It's called making a statement. Oh, so this is just a pretend kidnapping. I never would have guessed. Maya's scream sounded so real. She'll be okay. Trust me. I'm not about to take that chance. Fight the power. Nancy, what's the 411? The 411? Come on, Nancy. That's vintage slang. You know, the 411, the deal, the lowdown. Oh, the information. Exactly. Tell me about your relationship with the police. All I know is they like to dig through my garbage and follow my van. 
Does this face say America's most wanted to you? So, humans against the destruction of illustrious theaters. Tell me about it. This theater's a spotted owl. It's a humpback whale. It's endangered. Illustrious buildings testify to our finest human hours. They should be celebrated, not bulldozed to make way for cardboard megaplexes. Need I say more? Do you know what they plan to build on this spot after the theater is gone? Oh, it's very hush-hush. The name of the building firm is Wave of the Future, and the owner is some B. Thompson, descendant of J.J. Thompson, but he's never available for comment. Fishy, right? Ten bucks says B stands for baloney. Catch you later. Fight the power. This one's missing. I can't quite reach. You must be Nancy. The worry's written all over your face. Well, I'm Joe. I started to look for you, but then I figured better to park myself and let you find me. Any trace of your friend? I found the secret passageway all right, but no sign of Maya. I can't believe this is happening. What about calling the police? There's an outside line in the ticket booth. Thanks, but I already tried that. 
Standard procedure says I'm on my own for the next 24 hours. Standard procedure? I mean, I understand the police can't go chasing after every kid who gets lost at the mall, but this is different. But this theater's gonna be torn down in three days. Did you tell them that? They say it's unlikely that the kidnapper would keep her in the building. Well, I checked all the outside doors and, and they're locked up tight. Only folks who've been in the theater all day are Brady and Simone, you and Maya, Nicholas Falcone, and myself. You're suggesting it must be one of these people? Well, I've only got this one pair of eyes, so I can't say 100%. Are you counting yourself as a suspect? I was up here in the projector room, sound testing for the premiere. But I'd be disappointed in your detective work if you didn't put me through the ringer like a regular suspect. Sound testing? Yeah, I think I remember hearing you practicing your MC voice now that you mention it. I reckon if the kidnapper wants the demolition stopped, they must be keeping Maya somewhere in the building. Did I mention what the kidnapper said? Oh, I think so. Or maybe Brady told me when I saw him in the hall. He seems eager to help. Helpful suspects. What more could I ask for? That's the spirit. Now, what's your plan of attack? Operation Busta Kidnapper is about to begin. Where can I get an insider's guide to all of the secret passages in this place? Try calling county administration. The records division keeps that type of stuff. I bet a blueprint would show secret passages that even I've never found. Ask for the original plans, not the ones from the 56 remodel. When was the theater built? Completed in 1925. The vision of one J.J. Thompson. Anyway, I spent the last 40-something years finding my way around this place, so let me know if I can help. Thanks, Joseph. Don't let the turkeys get you down. There was a key here. Any news? How do you keep up with all of your fans, Brady? A big star like you must get hundreds of emails. Hundreds? Try thousands. All my email goes through Simone. She reads it, she writes back. Control issues, you know? Off the record, any message that says love Brady is just a big electronic smooch from her. Do you mind if I take a look around in here? Be my guest. I'm asking everyone, where were you when the kidnapping happened? Me? You think I kidnapped Maya and then breezed in here just four minutes later? Where would I hide her? In my back pocket? Okay, but where were you? I, well, I was late getting back from a haircut. I, uh, this is hard for me. I think my hairline might be receding. It's miserable. Simone's gonna go through the roof. Talk to you later, Brady. Don't be a stranger.
Nancy Drew, Simone Mueller. Don't worry, Vanishing Destiny is off. We've got bigger fish to fry. So you heard about Maya? Of course. I mean, a kidnapping? Right out of my star's dressing room? The premiere is small potatoes. It's worth more to us canceled or at least postponed. When the news gets out, the whole nation will be watching. I don't think we should get the press into this before the police have had a chance to investigate. <laughs> Where are you from? River Heights. Why? Yes, precisely. <laughs> River Heights. Listen, doll, I'm from L.A. This ain't my first time at the rodeo. We'll find your friend, or Brady Armstrong will, and when he does, every girl in America will wish she'd been kidnapped instead of Maya What's-Her-Name. I can't believe you. No girl wants to be kidnapped, ever. I'm proposing a business alliance. You scratch my back, I'll scratch yours. We don't have to see eye to eye. Sounds like an invitation to the swamp of no return. Thanks, but no thanks. Honey, you've got spunk. Ever consider acting? This girl power thing is red hot right now. Of course, we'd have to think of a stage name. Nancy Drew is so utterly forgettable. Joseph says the building was probably locked when the kidnapping happened, and that the kidnapper had to be someone who was inside the theater. Care to comment? Why don't you tell that little gray troll that I think he did it, just to keep himself from dying of boredom in this old dump. That's my comment. I'm asking everyone, where were you when the kidnapping happened? Oh, please, Nancy. I was on the phone doing business. But if I'm ever hard-pressed for entertainment, I'm sure kidnapping would be a real hoot. I think your phone's about to ring. Ciao.
and gentlemen, step right up! Ha ha! Find the Ace of Spades. Keep your eye on the card. Oh, too bad. Try again. The hand is quicker than the eye. Find the Ace of Spades. Keep your eye on the card. Ooh, I'm sorry. Perhaps you need your eyes checked. <laughs> the hand is quicker than the eye. Find the Ace of Spades. Keep your eye on the card. Try again. The hand is quicker than the eye. Find the ace of spades. Keep your eye on the card. Ooh, I'm sorry. Perhaps you need your eyes checked. <laughs> the hand is quicker than the eye. Find the Ace of Spades. Keep your eye on the card. Don't blink. You might miss something. <laughs> the hand is quicker than the eye. Find the Ace of Spades. Keep your eye on the card. Congratulations! You've beat the magician. Don't forget to collect your winnings. <laughs> your audience will be dazzled.
What's up? Can't talk long. Gotta check on my people. What's your attachment to saving this theater? You seem so personally invested. Politics is personal, but with this place, it's ultra-personal. My grandma, Louisa Falcone, designed the molds for all the insane plaster work that you see in this lobby and in the auditorium. The detail is so intricate. You just don't see this kind of artistry in new theaters nowadays. True, true. But there's more. I guess the architect owner guy, J.J. Thompson, ran out of cash before the building was done. He never paid my grandma dime one. And then he denied that she had ever done the work in the first place. Why didn't he give her the credit? Yeah, she was the artist type, not a deal maker. I guess she'd never signed any contractual stuff with J.J., and she didn't have the resources to sue him or any of that, so I guess she just had to let it go. She must have been so frustrated. Here's the kicker. After J.J. sharked her on this two-year project, she was broke, and then the Great Depression hit. She could never afford to work as an artist again. What did she do instead? Louisa, Mother Serenity Falcone? Ah, she just kept on trucking in true Falcone style. Died at 97 without a bitter bone in her body. I think she had a happy life, but this theater holds the last artwork she ever did. Don't you see, Nancy? Saving this place is not just for history. It's for justice. Can't you get some justice now? My family has been trying for years, but there doesn't seem to be anything on record that links her to this place. Nancy, could you do me a favor? I think I know what you're going to ask. While you're searching, could you just keep your eye out? If I run across the name Louisa Falcone or anything else that might help, You'll be the first to know. You're cooler than I thought, Nancy. I try to play it down. How goes the search? I found some of JJ's personal documents inside a secret panel in the basement. Well, don't just stand there. Start breaking it down. Did you ever hear about a challenge that JJ Thompson issued to Harry Houdini back in 1925? Yeah, and? JJ put up a big reward for this Houdini challenge. He must have thought the escape was impossible. But Houdini did it, and J.J. didn't have the reward money. What does this have to do with the ownership of the theater? From what I can tell, J.J. had to give Harry Houdini 50% of the theater as the reward. Ha! Serves that swindler J.J. right. Nancy, do you realize what this means? I'm working on a couple of theories. If Thompson didn't own the whole place, then whoever inherited it from Thompson doesn't legally own own the whole place either. Which means they don't have the authority to knock this building down. We've got to find out what happened to his half of the ownership. You keep looking for Maya. I've got a laptop out in my van. I'll get online and do some research. Check back soon. Catch you later. On the flip side. County Administration. 314-555-3309. Nancy, it's Joseph. Wait till you see this. Come to the projection room. Nancy, take a look at this. Where did you find it? Brady found it. This should be enough evidence to get the police over here, don't you think? I should think so. Give the police a call. And then you better go back to your hotel and get some rest. Just when I have a lead? No way! I've got to keep searching. You won't be any help to my if you get too tired to think. Well, I guess you have a point there. Go ahead and use the phone in the ticket booth. I'll be down in a minute. Hi, I'm looking for the blueprints for the Royal Palladium Theater. Do you have them on file? Are you a county employee? No, just a citizen on a mission. Okay, well, we do keep blueprints on file. Let's see. The computer says there are two sets for the Palladium. 
1923, and 1956. Do you have a preference? 1923, please. The originals. Would you like to hold while I retrieve them? Sure, thanks. Ma'am? Yes, I'm still here. It's very strange, ma'am. They're gone. Gone? You mean someone checked them out? Oh, we don't allow people to check them out. You can bring the blueprints to our reading room and study them there, but they're not supposed to leave the building. I can't imagine where they could be. Hold on, let me see if Charles knows. Ma'am, this is so strange. Charles says some guy was just in here looking at them a few days ago. What did he look like? Hold on. Hello? Charles said the guy had a hat on. He never really got a look at the guy. Was he young or old? Hey, Charles, young or old? energetic is all Charles remembers. Hmm. Okay, well, my name is Nancy Drew. I'm working on some things over here at the Royal Palladium. Could you do a search for the blueprints? Sure thing. I'll put in a find request. Call back in five to seven business days. Next week? Oh, I'm afraid I don't have that kind of time. Is there any way to expedite the search? I'm afraid not. The guy who does our misplaced material searches just returned from a month of paternity leave, and he's swamped. I see. This is urgent? Yes, it's urgent, all right. But I'll figure something out. Thanks, Madeline. Good luck. Bye. St. Louis Police Department. Missing Persons Unit, please. Please hold. Missing Persons, this is Ramsey. Hi, Sergeant Ramsey. This is Nancy Drew. I spoke to you earlier today about the disappearance of my friend, Maya Wen. Hello, Miss Drew. You're calling to tell me that you found your friend, I hope. I wish that were true, sir. No, she's still missing. I'm calling to report that I have the evidence you asked for. What did you find? Someone else here at the theater found Maya's press pass. It was clipped to her shirt when she went into the dressing room. It must have been torn off when she was kidnapped. Or it fell off. Or she just tossed it. Maya is very serious about her work, Sergeant Ramsey. She never goes anywhere without that pass. And she would not willingly leave it behind. Is the pass damaged in any way? No. Was anything disturbed in the area where it was found? I don't know. I'm not the one who found it. Okay, well, thanks for checking in, Miss Drew. If Maya hasn't turned up by tomorrow, we'll definitely be out to investigate. Someone will take a look at the press pass then. But you said that if I found evidence, you'd investigate the theater today. I'm sorry, Miss Drew, but we can't go chasing after every kid who decides to take a leave of absence. The vast majority of missing juveniles disappear of their own accord, and they reappear when they're good and ready. You have to believe me. Maya would never play this kind of game. Nicholas Falcone said he thinks somebody is using her to make a statement. Nicholas Falcone? Is he involved in this? Are you involved with him? Haddad is demonstrating against the demolition in front of the theater. Nicholas has set up shop in the lobby. I've spoken to him. I'm not involved with him. Are you aware of the allegations against Mr. Falcone's character, Miss Drew? Allegations? Nick Falcone operates according to his own rules. He'll do just about anything to save a theater, and he's not afraid to use extreme tactics. What kind of extreme tactics? You name it. Vandalism, sabotage, chaining himself to demolition machinery. Is that right? And last year there was a situation over in Nashville, just when the oldest theater in the city is about to be torn down, and mind you, Haddit is there in full force. A girl goes missing. So happens she's the daughter of the demolition boss. They go crazy looking for her. There's a call, just like the one you described. Anyway, to make a long story short, the demolition is called off, and three weeks later the girl is seen snuggling up to Falcone in a Memphis coffee shop. Are you suggesting Nicholas is staging this thing? I'm just saying that there's more to situations like these than meets the eye. 
Nick Falcone is a real operator and he likes to humiliate the police. I'm not going to jump on the bandwagon here with this whole royal palladium thing and let him make my unit look like a bunch of chumps. I see. So you aren't going to have any credit with us if you join ranks with him. Does he have a criminal record? Oh, minor stuff. Disorderly conduct, trespassing, yada, yada, yada. But Nick Falcone can slime his way out of a sticky situation like no one I've ever seen. Unfortunately, there's no jail sentence for being a royal pain in the neck. There are no good citizenship awards for it either. Look, I know you're worried, but for now, there's nothing we can do. And there's nothing you can do either. Why don't you go home and get some rest? I'm sure you've had a long day. Well, this has been very informative, Sergeant Ramsey. I'll talk to you tomorrow. Good night, Miss Drew. Hi, Bess. It's Nancy. Nancy! It's about time! How's St. Louis? Something terrible has happened. Maya went to Brady's dressing room to interview him. I guess he wasn't there. She screamed, and now she's gone. I think she's been kidnapped. Oh my gosh! Why would anyone want to kidnap Maya? I received a threatening phone call. Somebody wants desperately to stop this demolition, and they're holding Maya as a bargaining tool. That's terrible! Have you called the police? I called, all right, but get this. According to standard procedure, they can't get involved until Maya has been missing for 24 hours. What could possibly be standard about a girl getting kidnapped? They're not convinced it's a kidnapping. Well, how did she disappear then? Poof? Alakazam? Sergeant Ramsey says it could be a prank, or Maya might have just taken off or something. Sergeant Ramsey obviously doesn't know Wash U's most dedicated reporter. It's true. The only way she would have abandoned this story is if someone dragged her away from it. Do Maya's parents know? They always travel this time of year, remember? And besides, I've got to find Maya before this demolition. I doubt her parents could get back from the other side of the world before then anyway. What a mess. Yeah, it's been a while since I've been so personally attached to a case. Call me back when you know more. I'll get a hold of George and Ned and let them know what's going on. Poor Maya. I guess the only consolation is that she's got you on the rescue mission. I heard the whole thing, Nancy. Go get some sleep. I'll keep an eye on things till morning. This calls priority Tremulator. I'm sorry I had to see that wreath, Nancy. 
It's disgusting. This is one creepy kidnapper, that's for sure. Well, let's hope the kidnapper just did this to scare you. It's just strange. I mean, why would the kidnapper go to the trouble to have that thing arranged and delivered here? The phone's been ringing off the hook all morning. I don't know how the press got a hold of this, but they're all over it like ants on a picnic. Where did those missing posters come from? I can't say for sure, but I can make an educated guess. Are you thinking of a certain Hollywood agent we know? Can you believe the way she diverted all of the attention away from Maya and used the poster to promote Brady as the big hero? This shouldn't be happening. It's all backwards. So where will you go after the demolition? Are you planning to retire? Greasewood, Arizona. My brother Jake is there. It's a tiny town with no movie theater, so we're going to put one on the map. I got some money saved. Who is this J.J. Thompson character anyway? Old J.J. Owner, visionary, wheeler dealer. J.J. loved a magic show. He had this place built with those kind of big spectacle shows in mind. J.J. also happened to love the sight of his own mug in the mirror. You can tell by the way he uh, ornamented the auditorium with his own head. The history of this theater is so rich. I'm surprised the city of St. Louis isn't more interested in preserving it. Well, they are interested. The Historical Society's been working like the Dickens to get this place declared a landmark. But someone downtown has been stalling. They're awfully close. The police told me Nicholas Falcone is known for using extreme tactics to further his political causes. Why are you letting him use the lobby as his headquarters? Nicholas has been hanging around this theater since he was a little boy. I know how torn up he is about the theater. This will be over soon enough, and then he'll go home. I don't think he's dangerous, for gosh sakes. Gotta go now. Don't let the turkeys get you down. Nancy, what's the 411? You didn't tell me kidnapping was part of Activism 101. That's all hearsay, Nancy. They got no witnesses, no testimony, no nothing. So you have or have not used kidnapping to further your causes in the past? I am not an eco-terrorist, and I would never orchestrate the temporary disappearance of anyone who wasn't in on the plan and down with the cause. Maybe you'd better think about being in on the law and down with the truth, Nicholas. All right, Officer Nancy, chill out, will you? I'm on your side. I'm asking everyone. Where were you when the kidnapping happened? I was outside, harnessing public outrage. Ask anyone. Joseph told me that the St. Louis Historical Society is in the process of trying to declare this building an historical landmark. They've been in that process for years. It's all just a big wad of red tape, a bunch of bureaucratic hocus-pocus. Had it's about action, not paperwork. Catch you later. Fight the power. Have you seen the posters? Aren't they fabulous? That picture of Maya is the one from her press pass, isn't it? Yes. Thankfully, she's photogenic. That poster is just an advertisement for Brady. Maya's on the poster. It says she's missing. So what's your issue? Brady's out plastering those posters all over St. Louis and every podunk town for 50 miles. He's due back at any time, though for the press conference. What's he doing that for? Just to make sure this case isn't falling below the public radar. 
And besides, it's not for sure she's in the building. I've invited the press here today to report on Brady's commitment to solving this case. You know, a few questions, a few photo ops, no big deal. That funeral wreath was awful, wasn't it? You saw the wreath? Where is it now? I had it moved out front for the press conference. We want the press to know just how heartless this kidnapper is, don't we? Then it's all the more fabulous when Brady saves the day. How long have you been Brady's agent? Uh, I discovered him on an electric spring morning six years ago. He was working the original Coney Dog stand on Sunset Boulevard. It was pure luck. I was craving an all-beef frank at 7 a.m. He's been the jewel in my crown ever since. I think your phone's about to ring. Ciao. Ned, it's me. Nancy, Beth called and told me what happened with Maya. I've been worried sick. Did she tell you what the police said? About the 24-hour delay? Yeah, she told me. But I have faith in you, Nancy. You've solved plenty of cases before without help from the police. So let's get down to business. Who are your suspects? It seems there were only four people in the building at the time of the kidnapping, besides Maya and myself. Brady Armstrong, Simone Mueller, his agent, Nicholas Falcone, a political activist, and the caretaker, Joseph Hughes. Any hunches? Not yet. I've got a lot of work to do. Call me any time. I'll try to stay close to the phone. By the time I finally got to talk to Simone Mueller, she had heard all about the kidnapping and canceled the premiere of Vanishing Destiny. Hmm. Sounds like bad news travels fast around old theaters. That's just the thing. Simone didn't seem to think Maya's kidnapping was bad news at all. She kept calling it a great opportunity. She kept saying what fabulous publicity it's going to be for Brady. Sounds like she knows how to turn a profit in any situation. The question is, is she just responding to the situation, or did she have a hand in creating it in the first place? No flies on you, Nancy Drew. Sounds to me like your detective mind is in high gear. According to Joseph, the St. Louis Historical Society has been scrambling to get the Royal Palladium declared an historical landmark. And that would prevent the demolition? Right. So what's the holdup? Joseph thinks someone downtown is stalling. Hmm, maybe someone who wants the demolition has been greasing some palms. Probably. It's a shame because Joseph seems to think they're close. I wonder if this kidnapper is just trying to buy a little more time. What does Mr. Falcone have to say about the Historical Society? It was pretty cynical. Said the whole process was a bunch of hocus-pocus. Hmm, perhaps Mr. Falcone is using cynicism to disguise his true feelings. Harry Houdini must have been quite a character. What makes you say that? Oh, it just sounds like he was so generous and passionate about his craft. Everyone loved him. Any theories yet on what he did with his half of the theater? No, but I highly doubt he was generous enough to give his half back to old J.J. Thompson. That wouldn't have been an act of generosity anyway. It would have been a lapse in judgment. I've got to think of a way to get this demolition stopped. Well, the police aren't being much help. But couldn't you try contacting the owner of the building? I'm sure he or she would be willing to postpone for a couple of days. I mean, what's the rush? According to Nicholas, his name is B. Thompson, and he won't talk to the press. Hmm, I wonder what he has to hide. His building firm is called Wave of the Future. Catchy. I wonder what he has against the present. Ned, I just remembered something. Joseph used the phrase Wave of the Future when I first met him. He was talking about the remodel of the theater in 1956. Do you think it's a coincidence? I don't know, Nance. If Joseph turns out to be the owner of the theater and the guy behind the demolition, 
I think it'll be fair to say you've seen everything. Bye, Ned. Keep me posted. Hello? It's me again. Hi, Nancy. I've got George here, too. Bess filled me in, Nancy. Any developments? I'm just searching the theater, questioning suspects. And? I took Joseph's advice and called county administration to see about the blueprints for the theater. He sounds like a big help. Yes, but the woman on the phone said that the blueprints are missing. Official records? Missing? She said that a man was in last week looking at them, but they haven't been seen since. The kidnapper? Or a certain smoldering sidekick? Well, whoever it was, they must have taken the blueprints with them. How on earth am I going to find all the secret rooms and passages in this place now? I'm not worried, Nancy. Me neither. You could probably find a secret passage in a paper bag. Are you kidding, George? Nancy could find a secret passage in a blueberry muffin. When I spoke to the police about Maya's press pass, they said that Nicholas is known for using extreme tactics and that he might even have been involved in a staged kidnapping last year in Nashville. You don't think Maya could be mixed up with him somehow, do you? No way. Maya expresses her politics by writing about them. You know, the pen is mightier than the sword. She and Nicholas Falcone don't even speak the same language. I think you're right, George. But Sergeant Ramsey said I wouldn't have any credit with the police if I joined forces with Nicholas. Who said anything about joining forces? After all, he's still a prime suspect. But that doesn't mean he's not a valuable source of information when it comes to the theater. She's right, Nancy. As long as he continues to shoot off his mouth, you want to be around to take notes. Simone has called a press conference. I'd like to hear what's being said, but I get the feeling I'm not welcome. Bess, are you thinking what I'm thinking? Here's what I'm thinking. When has the lack of an invitation ever stopped Nancy Drew before? Is that what you're thinking? Bingo! So you think I should just barge right in? Better yet, why not just listen in? That way you know things that Simone and the others don't know you know. You know? Bess has a few rocks in her mouth. But she's right. And besides, there's another good reason to keep a low profile. I know what you're thinking, George. When the cats are away... The detective mouse will snoop. Ah, you have a point there, ladies. This might be my only chance to get some, uh... Insight? Yes, some insight into the lives of my suspects. Good idea. We're full of them. Right, Bess? Chock full. Bursting at the seams. We're practically idea foric. Brady said Simone wants him to appear wholesomely smoldering to his public. What in the world do you think that means? Well, wholesome makes me think of apple pie. And to smolder, according to my trusty dictionary, is... To burn slowly from the inside, without flame. So, he's a sweetie pie on the outside, but too hot to touch. Oh, did you have to bring this up with Bess here, Nancy? It seems like the two things don't go together. One is safe, the other is dangerous. Interesting. Maybe that's Brady's whole dilemma. He doesn't know whether he's a good guy or a bad guy. Which is exactly why he can't be trusted. When I arrived at the theater this morning, someone had delivered a funeral wreath. What? Isn't that creepy? You don't know who it was from? It was from the kidnapper, I assume. The note said something like, wouldn't you rather stop the demolition than plan a funeral? Since when do kidnappers have the time to special order flower arrangements? Apparently this kidnapper isn't afraid of the limelight. Look at the bright side, Nancy. If you find out who sent that wreath, your case is as good as closed. I met Nicholas Falcone, the leader of Had It. His organization is camped out in front of the theater, demonstrating against the demolition. What's the deal with Had It? Nicholas says he's sworn to slay the dragon of corporate generica. All in favor of men who slay dragons, say I. Honestly, Bess, what are we going to do with you? Nancy, what in the world is... Generica. I think it's a term for what this country would be like if suddenly it all looked the same. Oh, you mean if it became generic, like a bar of soap that's just called soap. Right. 
Haddit believes that protecting historical buildings is key to preserving our national character. That sounds noble. Yeah, except he practically jumped for joy when I told him the kidnapper's motive is to save the theater. Uh-oh. Sounds like you better keep an eye on him, Nancy. Nicholas told me that his grandmother did a lot of the artwork inside the theater, but that J.J. Thompson, the original owner, never paid her or even gave her credit for it. That's terrible. I can see why he's so dedicated to saving the theater, then. Yeah, I'd like to learn more about this J.J. Thompson. Maybe you can help Nicholas get his grandmother the credit she deserved. I told him I'd keep my eye out for anything that would prove her connection to this place. I wonder if J.J. left any of his personal effects behind. If he did, I'm sure they're gone now. His kids must have cleared the place out when they remodeled in 1956, a few years after he died. That's when it became a movie theater. You never know, Nancy. If there's one thing your detective work proves every time, it's that old buildings are the keepers of old secrets. Let's just hope this building lives long enough to tell. Okay, you two. I'll talk to you soon. Watch out for weird people! How are you holding up? Thanks for finding Maya's press pass. Where was it? I found it in the basement. Uh, I mean the balcony. <clears throat> it was the balcony. Balcony, basement, whatever. It's just my friend's life that's in danger here. Please, Nancy. It's not me. I guess I should have my eyes checked. I could have sworn that poster was all about you. It's Simone. She's relentless. I'm just a hostage on her runaway bus. That's funny. I don't see any gun to your head. Just a wad of money dangling in front of your nose. It's more complicated than you think. Listen, I've got to get ready for this press conference. I'll talk to you later. Not now, Nancy. I got the number. I left it in the ticket booth. This woman isn't a Houdini herself. She's the widow of one of Houdini's cousins. But it couldn't hurt to give her a call. I'll get right on that. Okay, folks, we're about to get started here. Uh, Mrs. Mueller and Mr. Armstrong will do their best to answer all of your questions in the time allotted. Uh, uh, but let's proceed with, with good manner, shall we? <clears throat> Thank you all for coming. I'm only sorry that the circumstances of our meeting are not more festive. Wouldn't it be nice if we were all gathered here today to revel in the blockbuster success of Brady Armstrong's new movie, Vanishing Destiny? Wouldn't we all prefer to turn our attention to record ticket sales and the squeals of delighted fans across the nation? But, alas... We have come together today over tragedy, not triumph. I've called this conference specifically to let you know, and I trust you will take it upon yourselves to inform the world, that Brady Armstrong will not rest. The greatest performance of his career will not be unveiled until Maya Nguyen... Hey, lady, you're breaking my heart. But isn't her name Maya Wynn? <clears throat> until... Maya Wynn is returned to her friends and family, safe and sound. Already, our real-life hero has searched this theater and uncovered important evidence. Already, he has driven 200 miles in a rent-a-car, no less, 
distributing missing posters to all the outer lying regions of this great city. You see, Brady Armstrong is a hero and a regular guy all rolled into one. Ooh, I'm swooning. Put a sock in it, Mr. Camouflage. And now, without further ado, I'd like to open the floor up to questions. Uh, is it true that the girl was at the theater to interview uh, Brady Armstrong? What was the interview about? Mr. Charmstrong, do you find your fans respond to you more in your chicken suit or in your curly wig? Did uh, anyone hear her scream? Uh, Ms. Mueller, you're his agent. Uh, chicken suit or curly wig? Any speculation of where the kidnapper's hiding her? Where did this funeral wreath come from? Isn't it a little unusual for a uh, movie star to help with a kidnapping like this? People, one at a time. Brady. Well, with all of my experience on the silver screen, I feel well prepared to save the day in St. Louis. Do you think the kidnapper is violent? Mr. Charmstrong, have you ever thought about growing a mustache? It might really distinguish you. Is it true you're offering a reward for the facts leading to Maya's return? That's right. Autographed movie posters for anyone and everyone who comes forward with a decent lead. Uh, yes, is it true that, uh, that Detective Nancy Drew is on the case? Yes, Nancy Drew is investigating... Is she available for comment? Ah, uh, it's a difficult situation. You see, Maya is a friend of Nancy's. And the personal connection, well, it may be clouding the detective's judgment. She's really on edge. Isn't anybody around here concerned about the welfare of this magnificent theater? There's more than one life at stake today, you know. Okay, I'm sorry. Hey, press people, over here. If you want the real story, talk to me. Sorry, Miss Mueller, you'll have your photo op in a moment. Yeah, over here, down by my van.
it's locked. Yes, smart Nancy True. You're wasting precious time. Stop the demolition or you'll never see her again. It's locked.
ya? These pieces won't budge. Help! Is anybody out there? Who's there? It's Nancy. Nancy? For goodness sakes. What are you doing down there? This chair seems to be stuck. Hold on, I'm greasing the wheels here. I found a secret room under the stage. I've got to check it out. The magician's room. <laughs> I swear, Nancy, as long as I've worked here, I've never been able to find my way in there. I found the door, but the pieces that open the door are stuck. Here, try this. Hurry. This should loosen things up. She was just here! Her shoe! Rubber is shockproof.
Oh, Nancy! Hey! I think the kidnapper just moved Maya to a new hiding place. Have you seen anything suspicious around here? Wow, are you sure? I didn't see anything. I found evidence that will prove that Maya's being held in this building. Wow! Evidence? Where? I'll talk to you later. I've got to get a hold of Sergeant Ramsey. St. Louis Police Department. Missing Persons Unit, please. Please hold. Missing Persons. This is Ramsey. Sergeant Ramsey, it's Nancy Drew. Hi, Miss Drew. I found Maya. You found her? So the case is closed. I found her, and then she disappeared again. Good grief. This girl's a regular Houdini. All right. What have you got for me? I found a secret room under the stage. I saw Maya through a peephole, but by the time I got into the room, she was gone. The kidnapper must have moved her. A peephole, huh? Are you sure you saw her? Sir, there's evidence. Pizza boxes and one of Maya's shoes. I left everything where it was so you could see for yourself. So you think the kidnapper's been using this secret room as a base camp? Well, this is very interesting, Miss Drew. It sounds like you've been conducting quite a search. Now will you please send someone over to investigate? Yep. Just bear with me while I try to find an available car. Help is on the way, Miss Drew. Great. Bye. Call cannot be completed as Yes, hello. Hello. Is this Eustacia and Dropoff? Who else would it be? Everyone else is dead. Oh, Mrs. Andropoff. I'm sorry to bother you. I'm trying to find out some information about Harry Houdini. Is it true that you're his cousin? Who wants to know? Oh, I beg your pardon. My name is Nancy Drew. I'm a detective working on a case in St. Louis. Harry was only my cousin by marriage, but my husband is dead, and so is Harry. So I guess that makes me nobody's cousin. Satisfied? I'm researching Mr. Houdini's ownership of the Royal Palladium Theater. Would you know anything about this? He owned it. Half of it anyway. For a few months. Then he died. Does that help? Do you know what happened to his half? Did he sign it back over to J.J. Thompson? Return it to James Jehuzaphat? Mr. Stupendous? Not on his life. Losing that man was Harry's greatest escape. Did someone in Houdini's family inherit the theater? Harry made a plan to give his half of the theater to someone he admired. A young magician, I assume. Perhaps a protege. I remember my husband telling me this. Can you tell me anything more? More? I'm 96 over here. I don't exactly have time to burn. I know it was a long time ago, Mrs. Andropoff, but this is terribly important. My friend is in danger, and finding out what happened to Houdini's half of the theater Maybe my only hope of saving her. Call the Library of Congress. Ask about the Houdini collection. 
There must be something in all of those letters. You tell that Sherman Trout, you stay, she said. You are not dead yet, Shermy, so get up and make yourself useful. The Library of Congress. You don't happen to have that number, do you? <clears throat> well, I should have this letter from Shermy around here somewhere. Catfoot coupons. Vincent Jack has a repair. There you stay. Here we go. Library of Congress, Washington, D.C. Two zero two five 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 zero zero zero. Thanks, Mrs. Andropov. You've been a great help. Save it for my funeral. Manuscripts. Uh, I'm trying to reach Sherman Trout, please. Speaking. How may I help you? Hi, Mr. Trout. My name is Nancy Drew. I'm a detective working on a case that involves Harry Houdini and the Royal Palladium Theater in St. Louis. Eustacia Andropov recommended I call you. Ah, uh, yes. Eustacia was most helpful to us when we were assembling our Houdini collection. I presume you'd like to have a look at it? Yes, please, Mr. Trout. I'm very interested. Fine. Well, you'll just need to register with the library when you get here and fill out a request for the materials you wish to view. When your request has been processed, the materials will be delivered to one of our reading rooms where you can view them. Mr. Trout, please let me explain. Unfortunately, there's no way for me to come to Washington, D.C. to do research. I'm hoping you could help me find a document. Well, Miss Drew, I'm sorry if you have logistical constraints, but please understand my own limitations. The Library of Congress currently holds over 40 million items, contained in 10,000 separate collections. It's the largest and most comprehensive library in the world. I simply don't have time to run research errands for the individual citizens. Mr. Trout, if I don't solve this case in a matter of hours, the building I'm standing in will be demolished and an innocent 19-year-old girl, a friend of mine, may lose her life. You may be my only hope. Why is your friend in danger? She was kidnapped by someone desperate to save this building from demolition. And what can you possibly be hoping to find in the Houdini collection that would help matters? Mr. Houdini was part owner of the theater, and I'm trying to find out who inherited his half or what became of it when he died. I'm hoping Houdini might have discussed it somewhere in his personal documents. If I can prove that the current owner is not legally the full owner, then maybe I can get the demolition stopped and save Maya. I see. Well, this sounds urgent. I suppose I can take a look. That would be such a help, Mr. Trout. If you find anything, could you overnight it to me at the Royal Palladium? Well, I certainly can't send you the document itself. It's a historical artifact now but I could send you a slide. What's the street address there, if I find anything? It's 1330 Washington Avenue, St. Louis, Missouri, 63101. Please send the package in care of Nicholas Falcone or myself, Nancy Drew. I can't tell you how grateful I am, Mr. Trout. You might just be a lifesaver. Miss Drew, I assure you, Sherman Trout is a man of his word. Thanks so much. Bye. Hi, Nancy. What happened? The kidnapper's been holding Maya in that magician's room under the stage. You found her? Oh, that's great. Where is she now? By the time I got through that door, the room was empty. Are you sure you didn't just imagine you saw her? I'm sure. She was there, and now she's gone. Don't tell me you think I'm crazy, too. But what do you mean, gone? She left? Well, she didn't just get up and walk away. Her legs were tied. The kidnapper must have moved her. I found a couple of pizza boxes down there, so at least I know she's not starving. Evidence. That should interest the police. Have you called them? Yeah, they said they'll come check it out, but they may not be able to get here for a while. I'll wait up for the police. You get some rest, Nancy. You're going to need it for tomorrow. Make sure they check that magician's secret room.
Can you believe this ransom demand coming out of thin air? Do you think it's real? Apparently, the call came from north of here, a town called Granite City. Personally, I think it's a hoax. But now the police are convinced that Maya's not in this building. But what about the evidence I found? Are you sure the pizza boxes were in that magician's room? Because the police couldn't find anything. That's impossible. Are you sure they looked in the magician's room? They searched the whole building. How could they miss two big pizza boxes with leftover pizza inside? What about Maya's shoe? No trace of that either. This is so discouraging. Follow your gut, Nancy. If you think Maya's still here, you keep looking for her, you hear? I got another threat from the kidnapper. That creepy voice came on the PA and told me to stop searching for Maya. The projection room? But who? Someone must have ducked out of the press conference. I was so busy with crowd control, I didn't even notice. Joseph, I did some checking. You don't really have any family in Greasewood, do you? Now what you want to go digging into an old man's life for, Nancy? Sorry, Joseph, but if you're not going to Greasewood, I have to think maybe you're feeling a little desperate these days. Desperate enough to kidnap someone? You tell me. Now, now. I am going to Greasewood, and I'm not desperate. I made up the part about my brother so you wouldn't feel sorry for me. You've got enough to worry about, don't you? It's only a matter of hours until the demolition. How are you holding up, Joseph? Oh, fine. Everything's great. Fine. Fine. I was up till the wee hours polishing up the lobby. Heck, I, I'm even fixing to repair the old key maker so you can give it a whirl. Guess old habits die hard, eh? Gotta go now. Bye. Did you call? What's the story? Sure did. Go on, spill it. She didn't know much, but she gave me the number of this guy at the Library of Congress who has access to the archives of Houdini's letters. And what did they say? Sherman Trout is on our side. Keep your eyes peeled for a special delivery. Way to go, Nancy. You're on fire. Catch you later. Fight the power. How's progress? I know you sent the funeral wreath. Now where's Maya? I don't know what you're talking about, sugar. Listen, the pressure must really be getting to you. I know a top-notch aromatherapist in town, okay? I'll give you her number. Come on, Simone. Ginger's 24-hour flower-rama? I believe you've been caught red-handed. You broke into my personal property? I could have you arrested for that. Go ahead. Call the police. And while you're at it, why don't you mention that you're the kidnapper? All right. I sent the stupid wreath, but I'm no kidnapper. I needed something for the cameras, didn't I? And it was a very tasteful arrangement. Should have been for 300 bucks. Perhaps I went a little overboard. Someone should sentence you to 50 years of humanity service, whether you're the kidnapper or not. What are you doing hanging out with that Falcon jerk? I'm not hanging out with him, Brady. I'm conducting a search here, and I'll take any tip I can get. That guy's bad news, and he's certainly not going to help your credibility with the police. Don't worry. I don't trust him any more than I trust you, or anyone else around here for that matter. Just trying to help. Talk to you later, Brady. You betcha. Nick is 
Jason's Pizza Pies. What can I get you? <laughs> well, hello there. I'd like a large pizza with a works. Even anchovies, ma'am? I know you have issues with anchovies. Extra anchovies. Wow, Nancy. Things must be getting hairier if you're contemplating anchovies. What's up? I can't understand how the police could have received a ransom call from Granite City. And why would the kidnappers suddenly demand cash without even mentioning the demolition? Your skepticism is probably right on, Nancy. You think? Sure. After all, Brady did spread those missing posters over half of Missouri. There are always a few jokers who try to jump on the bandwagon in situations like these. It just makes me sick to think that anyone would try to profit from such a terrible situation. It's a mixed up world, Nancy. I confronted Simone about the receipt for the funeral wreath, and she claimed she just needed something for a photo shoot. Would you buy that? That's a tough one, Nancy. In Simone's world, where everything is a photo shoot, her excuse sounds just twisted enough to be true. But on the other hand... You know me too well, Nancy Drew. On the other hand, Simone's mind is just too devious and much too selfish to be believed. Bye, Ned. Go get him, Nancy. Hello? Hello? I got it, George. Is it Nancy? I don't know yet. I'm busy talking to you. Will you hang up? It's Nancy, all right. I knew it! Hey, you two. I don't know, Bess. She sounds a little down in the dumps, doesn't she? <sighs> she sure does. What's going on, Nancy? I just can't believe it. The evidence I found yesterday, the pizza boxes and Maya's shoe. When the police finally came to investigate, it was gone. What? You're kidding! And now the police really think I'm losing my marbles. Joseph! He's the only one who knew about your discovery, isn't he? Yeah, he said he'd show the police where to go. And wait a second. When I came up from the basement, I bumped into Brady wandering around backstage. Interesting. Yeah, he seemed surprised to see me. What did you tell him? I guess I did let on that I'd found some evidence. Gee, Nancy, if you wanted the whole world to know, why didn't you just broadcast it on national television? Please, George, I feel bad enough. Now it's the day of the demolition and I'm still clueless. That's not true, Nancy. You've made significant progress. Maybe you should focus on trying to stop the demolition. Aren't you expecting a package? Indeed I am. If Sherman Trout really is a man of his word, that is. She sounds better already, huh, George? She's lucky we don't charge her for these calls. The detective support hotline could get awfully expensive. I asked Joseph where he would go after the theater is demolished, and he said he was moving to Arizona to start a movie theater with his brother. A fresh start. Good for him. Yeah, except that I found a letter that says his brother has been dead for years. Why would he lie? What do you think he's hiding? Give the guy a break. Maybe he just wants to hide the fact that his life is going to be empty without that theater to look after. I came across this old book that explains how to do a bunch of magic tricks. Cool! Like pulling a rabbit out of a hat? Like sawing my cousin Bess in half? Nothing quite that sensational, ladies. But I did learn how to use a pencil to reveal a secret message. Ooh, that could come in handy. How does it work? Well, if someone writes something, let's say it's a secret code on a piece of paper, and they press hard with a pen, it will make an impression on a blank piece of paper underneath. Yeah? Then the magician applies a pencil to the seemingly blank piece of paper. With careful shading, the pencil will reveal the shapes of the numbers or letters in the code. Presto! Do you see? That's pretty cool. I can only imagine what would happen if we applied the pencil to Bess. Just think of all the secret codes that would be revealed. Like Jacques, Rick, Brady. Oh, George, I'm not as impressionable as you think. I received another threat. This time, the kidnapper addressed me by name. Another phone call? What was the threat? This one came over the PA. Apparently, searching for Maya is a waste of time, and I should focus on stopping the demolition, or else. Well, Nancy, this kidnapper may have learned your name, but obviously they haven't figured out the first thing about who they're dealing with. I just wish I could see the look on the kidnapper's face when you crack this case wide open. Okay, you two. I'll talk to you soon. Keep up the good work, detective. Yeah, you're doing great.
Maya's notebook? Hey, you. The jig is up, Brady. Start talking. Huh? I'm afraid you've lost me. You've been lying to me, playing Mr. Helpful and Concerned all this time. I found her notebook in your bag. I haven't done anything wrong. You have some nerve. I bet that notebook has your fingerprints all over it. Okay, Nancy, here's the deal. My real name is Brady Thompson. Simone pushed for Armstrong more wholesomely smoldering, she said. Yeah, so? I'm Wave of the Future, Inc. The owner of this theater, great nephew of JJ himself. But you're an actor. Why in the world would you want to bulldoze a theater? The place is shabby. It needs major repairs. It's a money pit and a has-been. Not the image I want to project. You can't be serious. Never underestimate the power of image, Nancy. You are what you project. So what's your point? When people think of Brady Armstrong, they think sparkling white teeth and healthy glow. Success glows. It doesn't crumble and sag. The hero never rides a has-been horse. But what are you going to do with the site? When I saw these ritzy theme restaurants popping up all over the country, it hit me like my first original idea. Brady Armstrong's Planet Tinseltown. Can't you see it on the marquee? Grand opening. The lights will say it all. What does this have to do with Maya? I've sworn to be the captain of my own destiny. Maya was going to expose me, muck up my name in this controversy. It would have been a dark cloud over the launch of Tinseltown. And for that, she deserves to be kidnapped? I didn't kidnap her. I found her notepad in the basement with the press pass. I just thought I'd hang on to it for a few days until the dust settles. How could you withhold anything that might help me find her? How could you? Sorry, Nancy. Look, you're not thinking clearly. It's obvious she's not in the building. We've searched everywhere. She has to be in the building. I know she's here. You're the only one who thinks she's here. There's no evidence. Joseph believes me. He's a confused old codger. Nicholas thinks she's in the building. He's an outlaw, and he's using you. There was evidence. I found a pizza box and one of her shoes. Evidence that no one was able to verify. Who's to say you didn't imagine that stuff? Now, if you'll excuse me, I've got to rally a wrecking crew. You can't do this!
Nancy, we could be golden. A package just came from that museum. We may have the goods to stop this demolition dead in its tracks. Check the ticket booth. Nancy, you've got to find out what's on that slide. I'll talk to Joseph and see if he knows what the- We can't wait for Joseph. He's probably roaming around saying goodbye to each and every doorknob. I heard they're about to start clearing out the building. You've got to hurry. But the police are going to start clearing the building and- I'll cover for you when the police come in. This is it, Nancy. Go! It's locked. Okay, officers, this is our final sweep. In a matter of minutes, this building will be nothing but a pile of rubble. See anything, Dino? All clear in here, Sarge. Testing. <laughs> testing. One, two, three, testing. Is this thing on? Hello? <laughs> testing. <laughs> testing. One, two, three, testing. Is this thing on? Hello? <laughs> I need that knob. Another secret passageway. I should switch the power off. Hey, Nancy, I've been looking for you. Joseph, I thought you left the theater. I've decided I need to get organized, Nancy. Tomorrow I'm really going to straighten up in here. But Joseph, there isn't going to be any tomorrow. Not for this theater, anyway. I think a fresh coat of paint would really cheer things up, don't you? I know it's you, Joseph. But why? Were you trying to buy some time so the Historical Society could declare the theater a landmark or something? Do you think the premiere will sell out? Snap out of it. Just tell me where Maya is. Don't tell him she's here, Nancy. I will take her away and knock down the theater. They're gonna knock it down anyway. Please! We don't have much time! Don't tell him, Nancy. I 
must have the key somewhere in my bag of tricks. It's locked. It's locked. you out of there I've got to let them know we're up here okay. Jimmy is that ball ready to swing ah that light look the marquee stop the demolition dear Bess I still can hardly believe that Joseph sweet old Joseph was Maya's kidnapper he says he planned to kidnap Brady with the idea that Simone could use her Hollywood connections to save the theater. But when Maya entered the dressing room, he panicked and grabbed her instead. Plan B was to stall the demolition long enough for the Historical Society to declare the building an official landmark. I guess he's been at the Royal Palladium for so long, he just couldn't imagine his life without it. But desperation aside, poor Joseph wasn't cut out for a life of crime, and pretty soon things were spinning out of his control. Simone's publicity stunts didn't help. At least he was courteous and kind to Maya through the whole thing. Her testimony should help him in court. The good news is that the Royal Palladium is still standing. Once he heard that Nicholas would inherit his grandmother Louisa's 50% of the theater, Brady decided he'd better find another site for Planet Tinseltown. In order to make amends for things, and because he needed some good publicity, Brady donated his half of the theater to the St. Louis Historical Society. Together with Haddit, they should have this place restored to its original glory in no time. Not such a happy ending for Simone, I'm afraid. She received an official reprimand from the National Press Corps for her stunt with the wreath. Still, knowing Simone, she'll be back at the top of her game in no time. So, here ends the longest three days of my life. The premiere of Vanishing Destiny is back on. But I think this detective is going to wait for it to come out on videotape. <laughs> Talk to you soon. Love, Nancy.